Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be covering 90 Day Fiancé before the 90 days, season 2, episode 7. So let's jump into it. Um, I have to say this episode was like filled with drama, drama, drama. Um, there were a couple of couples that had like more of a happy storyline, but for the, for the most part, most of the couples were fighting. So, um, I just want to jump into the first couple, which is our new couple, um, Daya and Marta. So, Daya is from Wisconsin, Wisconsin, I believe. Um, she's 30 years old, um, she's a single mother of two kids, and she had met a man from Algeria named Daya. Um, I, I forgot how old he is, but that's not necessary. Um, so they met and they remind me of a mix of Paul and Karini because of the, the language barrier. He speaks Arabic, she speaks English. Um, where it's just like, I don't know if this is going to be, I don't know if this could work out. Um, I just feel like one of their main problems, and they haven't even met each other yet, is going to be religion. And it doesn't look like anyone is willing to compromise, so I don't know how you get past that. Um, also with the language barrier, I don't know how you get past that. And I'm surprised he's he's accepted her as a um, as a exotic dancer because that is so against his religion. But like, that's that's none of my business. I definitely think it's something that is, they're going to. Um, have problems with and it's going to um, possibly break up the relationship because this is something that it she wants to do and she is doing it to make a living and for you to tell her to like stop doing it I don't think with the type of person that she's coming across as of now, as of now I don't think she, she would um, back down and be like okay I'll just leave my job so that's it with them. We really haven't gotten much. Um, so she's going to be traveling to Algeria, I think, in about a week. So we'll see um, what happens with their storyline. Um, I'd also like to point out, we don't see Tariq and Hazel in this episode, which you can understand. But I technically, I didn't really miss them. I didn't really miss them. So the next couple I want to talk about is Paul and Karini. They got married in the last episode, and I don't know what happened. I don't know um, what happened between last episode to now. It's been two weeks. This is supposed to be you're supposed to have your honeymoon. You're supposed to be like in wedding bliss. Like you can do no wrong. You're the love of my life. You're the one. And it's not like that between them. They're fighting constantly, and this time they're fighting about the way Paul is treating Karini's family. He um, accused her brother of being a thief, which I think he went a little bit too too far um, with accusing him with that of that. I think that he might be greedy and inconsiderate, but I really wouldn't call him a thief. I can understand where Paul's coming from, where you you're um, you don't live in this country, you're low on funds, you don't have that much money, you're buying to support you and your your significant other and then some one comes in and is inconsiderate and then just starts eating up your food and everything they're not paying for your groceries and stuff like that so I can understand where Paul is coming from but I don't know like I feel like they keep missing or they keep um, not filming the parts where Paul is lashing out and being crazy but that's what he did, and he he was done with Karini's brother. Karini obviously was not having that, um, and then she went back to like, "You're not listening to me. You don't have respect for me." And then she threw around the, "I want a divorce. I want a divorce." And Karini is like gone. She's done with Paul for the moment, but she's just like, "I want a divorce," and she left. So. I don't really know what's going to happen with their relationship um, in, I always say in real life because it's like TV. In real life they're still together so they worked it out but 
whatever. Um, I'm done with them. I, I don't know, I just feel like it looks like Paul is never going to change and Karini is never going to really grow up. And I'm tired of watching them. So let's jump into the next couple. Oh, I need to breathe when I talk about this couple. Angela and Michael. Michael. Um, I am done. I am like, actually, I'm, I'm like this close to being done with Angela. She is annoying the hell out of me. She comes off as this very confident woman, but she is so insecure, it's killing me. I, it's like Michael can't get a break. So there's three things she brought up this episode that um, is causing a rift in their relationship. Number one, he hasn't put Angela as his screen saver, screen background for his phone. Angela, are you kidding me? Uh, say Michael, say, say you, you, you asked Michael to do it, he didn't do it. You have access to his phone apparently 24-7 whenever you feel like. Why don't you just take it and put it as, as, as his background? Like, it wasn't like a big deal. But Angela cannot get over that. Second lie is the thousand women he follows on Instagram. So, I don't, I guess maybe because Angela is up there in age, she is not, and she probably doesn't have an Instagram account, she just doesn't understand the gist of Instagram, where you're just following a bunch of people that look good, that are living fake lives, that um, have a photoshopped pictures, um, for the um, to show off the illusion that they're living a great life to everybody and all you do is like and comment on it and that's all you can do she's making such a big deal out of it you would have thought that like Michael's following all these American women and he's talking to them I can understand if she's like stop DMing them or stop getting messages from them but he's just following them he's just looking at pictures of other women Angela understands that she's an older woman, but that's kind of what you sign up for when you're dating a younger man. And I feel like with Angela, it's my way or the highway. Like she's just like, I'm not here. I'm not here for your for your opinions. I'm not here for you to talk back to me. Whatever I say goes. And Michael is hanging in there. Um, he's definitely hanging in there uh, for longer than I expected. And then the third um, secret, which is a, a major secret, uh, not a secret, but like a problem for them, is Michael cheated on Angela. And it's really hard um, because people are long distance to say cheated on because I had never met you in person, so it's hard to say, it's hard for me to kind of think that we could be together when we haven't met in person yet but apparently it was early on in a relationship and the first version of the story was uh, Michael was going home there was this girl she was stranded she needed a ride she couldn't find anyone Michael volunteered to give her a ride and then it was out of his control he didn't know what happened but she unbuttoned his his zipper and gave him a blowjob and that's the story that um, Michael told Angela so I was like okay like, okay cool but then um, she, her version of the story is Michael was out with his guys he was trying to look for like a, a side thing and then he found some he found some girl and then they just had sex. So then when she was like, Michael, Michael, I don't know her story. Um, Michael tells her, like, yeah, you're right. And then I was like, the story sounds more believable, but the way that Michael was just kind of giving in and admitting, I was like, I'm like, that's weird. To find out, Michael says, um, 
to find out that like Michael's like oh no that story wasn't real and then I'm like then what like you know how you know how Angela is she freaks out she reacts to these stuff to this type of stuff why would you give in to her beliefs knowing that she's already been so insecure this whole trip I don't know Michael of mess Michael likes problems because Angela went off on him she is done with him she's calling her daughter to tell to tell her you know what I'm done I'm ready to leave and stuff um, Michael try to speak with her again but then he was just like you know what I can't talk to her because she won't let me explain myself or um, express my feelings Angela is done so um, <laughs> then Angela starts to um, take back the memorabilia and stuff like that and I was just like I was just like, Michael, let her go. But in his confessional, he did say, if like something like, he said something like, if Angela leaves, like, like there goes my trip to America. He said something like that, which I was just like, ah, oh, I have to remember that like he has motive. So he's not necessarily begging her to stay because he might, he's in love with her. He has like another agenda. So I was like, Touche, Michael. I see why you still need Angela or you still want her. But either way, like, I'm sure Michael can find someone else that's younger that he can do this with. So that's it for this couple. So the next couple I want to talk about is John and Rachel. This was a pretty sad segment um, because Rachel is going home. She doesn't want to go home, John doesn't want her to go home, and it's kind of, you can kind of count down the days where she would have to leave. And so she finally, towards the end of her trip, gets to meet John's best friend. I don't remember his name. Um, so they go down to London to meet him. And I don't know what is with John's friends and them throwing him under the bus. They talk so much shit. Like, you have like two different friends when you watch the show. You have like Michael's friends that are like, oh no, he's a really good guy and like, you'll really like him. And then you have John's friends that are like, oh, he's a dick, he sleeps around and stuff. And like, he has lots of girlfriends type of thing. And I'm just like, you, you, like, as his best friend, you're supposed to be in his corner. You're supposed to be like, yeah, John's a great guy. Yeah, like, you. You would be lucky to have him and like all this stuff but like he's throwing him on the bus like i can't take him seriously i don't know this is the first time he usually with a lot of women this and that and i'm just like like why do you have your friends like what are your friends here for um anyways they talk about uh, john mentions that he's been in like open relationships and like friends with benefits situation which like it's fine um, he did date a lot of women, so he had different types of relationship. But that struck a chord with Rachel, and then Rachel was kind of like, "Oh, I don't know if I can trust him um, when we're gone, when like they leave." And I'm just like, Rachel, you've been with him for a year and a half, and you hadn't seen him. Like, I'm sure your trust is stronger than that. And like, you keep throwing in his face that he dated a lot of women. I don't know. Sometimes with women, would you rather hear? them admit to you about how much women they've seen, they've seen in the past, or would you rather them just see nothing? Because I feel like sometimes men can't win either way. And I feel like she's having trust issues with him, even though he's he is trying so hard to show her that like, I'm not only here for you, I'm here for your, your daughter, and, um, probably her, her other daughter too, and I want to make you my wife type of thing. This is like a forever thing. Like, I'm not playing around. And it kind of annoyed me how, like, Rachel was still very, like, reluctant, um, to fully trust John. But they, I guess they, they somewhat get over it, and then they, um, he drives her to the, the airport, and it's really, really sad watching, watching them leave. 
they have they discuss um, speaking with a lawyer to see what type of visa process he could go through um, and like what are his chances of him getting denied um, due to his criminal record. So they're still trying to figure that all out, but they want to be a forever thing. So I say good luck to them and in real in real life, they're still together. So I'm happy to hear that. Um, okay, so let's go into the next couple. Let's go to Ricky and Jimena. So, I don't know, when I watch Ricky's segments, I don't know, to me Ricky's just grimy. He's just like, ugh, like, he's gross. So, Ricky needs to talk to Jimena about the whole Melissa thing of him coming to Colombia originally to see uh, to see one girl and then that falls out that whole thing has like they have a falling out and then he talks to Jimena and he sees Jimena so he's developed feelings for Jimena he loves Jimena for some reason I don't understand how you're talking to people at the same time and stuff and then you're, you're loving both of them um, like I, I just I don't understand his mindset. I feel like he's the type of guy that like will tell you he loves you like within like a week or something, um, because he doesn't want to be alone, or or he like he loves love. Um, so they, I have to say, they are a good couple. They mesh really well, um, and Ricky's Ricky's Spanish is really good. Where at least because Jimena doesn't speak as much English, they can actually communicate. Um, decently. So, um, I have to take a break because what annoyed me the most is how Ricky took that engagement ring that he was gonna go give to an, gonna give to a next girl and like re-gifted it, put it in his photography bag to go give it to Jimena. He's like, oh, I think that might be bad luck and stuff. Ricky, why do you need to propose at all? Like, why can't you just, like, why can't you just become your girlfriend and you develop a relationship like that? Like, why do you need to propose to this person? I thought that was really, really, like, messed up of Ricky to even suggest him giving Melissa's ring to Jimena take the ring back to the store or go pawn the ring and go get another ring like come on Ricky so the way he's going to break it to her is he's going to take her on like a little getaway to tell her the bad news and then propose to her the day after Ricky was really brave to think that like him this was just gonna kind of go over Jimena and she was gonna forgive him and then the next day where they're gonna propose. Like if you have bad news to tell me, don't bring me somewhere nice, romantic, have me and my feelings feeling good, and then you're gonna tell me something like this. Um, they ask, um, no, Ricky tells Jimena like, okay, I have something very important to tell you and stuff, and he's coming off as so nervous so Jimena looks at that and goes oh like oh my god I don't know what he has to tell me but you know he might propose and stuff like that which I was just like Jimena like I don't know why people want to get married so quick but so um they go off to this this getaway this nice getaway place it looks very beautiful and then uh, Ricky has set up a dinner for them so then Ricky is like stumbling over his words like I, I have something to tell you um like I don't want you to, like saying like I don't want you to get mad and stuff like that and she was just like what do you tell me because throughout the whole segment she's been praising Ricky calling him a good guy and like he's so sweet he's so romantic he's everything I want so she's just kind of like okay what's going on like why can't you tell me and he's kind of just like, okay, okay, okay. So, I'm happy he finally tells her that Melissa is not part of the production crew. 
Melissa was a girl that he was talking to at the same time he was talking to her on Columbia Cupid. So then she was kind of like taken back like, oh, okay. She puts two and two together and realizes that Ricky did not come here for her initially. Ricky tried to play it off as like, oh no, like I did meet her, but like we had no chemistry, which no, Ricky. She not only dumped you, she's probably kicking with her friends, going like, oh that guy's so stupid. Um so Jimena puts two and two together and goes, Oh, okay, so you went to go see Melissa. You guys didn't work out for whatever reason, and then you call on me, and then I come see you. And that's when, like, I felt it for Jimena, because she was just, like, sitting there feeling stupid, being like, I, I feel like I'm, like, plan B, I'm option B, and I'm not, I'm not nobody's, like, second best type of thing. I'm no one's second choice. And she was not having it, and then Ricky was trying to be like, oh, you know, like, calm down, calm down, come on, let me, like, explain it. Like, like, Ricky, let her be mad, because she deserves to be mad. Like, what do you think was going to happen? And then you're, like, you're questioning her about the money that, that, um, you gave her and where it goes, yet you're, you're pulling crap like this? So, I don't know the status of their relationship and what's going to happen, but I'm glad that... Ricky, first of all, finally told her, and that Jimena was very angry, um, and I think she deserved to be. So, last but not least, we're going to talk about Darcy and Jesse. I thought Darcy and Jesse, this would be their last segment, they're going to be over, he's going to Amsterdam, they're done. But apparently they're not due, due to the previews I saw, so I'm, I'm very disappointed. But... Um, they're actually pretty decent this this episode. There was a little bit of bickering, but I feel like in order for them to survive as a relationship, they have to bicker at least every day. Um, but she's um, going to drive him to the airport. They stop by um, her kids' um, house, well, her house where her kids are, to say goodbye. Um, you can tell her kids are kind of like, Okay, bye Jesse. Um, and like I felt like it was a very awkward situation. Um, they they're driving. Um, I guess she has like Waze on or Google Maps, and he's kind of like getting a bit antsy because he needs to make it obviously to his flight. And she's like, and she was just like, oh no no babe, we'll be there in time. And then they're like, oh an extra five minutes. And then next thing you know, she's in traffic for an hour, which I can understand Jesse's feelings at, the, at that time because he's on edge, and I don't know how common it is for flights to be out of, I don't, I don't know if he, he would fly out of Connecticut, but if he were to do that, I highly doubt there's, um, there's multiple flights um, to Amsterdam. So he's just kind of like worried, like, I need to go, I need to go. Um, they kind of like bicker a little bit, but it's fine. They get to the airport, and it's all hugs and kisses, and I love you and stuff. They, at the end, they make up. So all the fighting and all the stuff we saw um, gets essentially erased because they get, they make up. They decide that they're going to work on the relationship, which is like, whatever, I don't care. So, um, I usually don't talk about the preview, but for them, because I thought they were going to be over, and they're not, I, I, I wasn't really paying attention, because um, I don't really like to watch the previews, but I guess Darcy's coming to Amsterdam, or I don't know, they're going to meet up, and Jesse said that he's going to basically break up with her. So I was just like... After all the stuff they were talking in this episode that like, oh, you know, um, I can see myself living here and blah, 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 blah. But I feel like the way, Darcy always sounds very optimistic and Jesse always sounds unsure of the relationship. Like, yeah, we'll see. Maybe. If it comes to that type of thing. Um, but I know in real life they're not together, so 
it is what it is. So I believe that's all the couples because we didn't have a Tariq and Hazel segment this episode. So that's it. Um, that's the end of my recap of 9 Day Fiancé Before the 90 Days, Season 2, Episode 7. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm just a dumb cop, fucking sick and tired of it. Maybe I could find.